Hi everyone. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about lubricated bearings. Um, lubricated bearings provide uh, redu a reduction in friction uh, for rotating members. Um, generally, you know, rotating shafts or, or um, things like that uh, within other components. And when we talk about lubricated bearings, um, usually we're talking about things that are uh, useful for high speed uh, operation, high speed but low uh, load carrying, um, because instead of having physical things to carry like a force, um, we're relying on the oil the, that, that's used for lubrication. So uh, I have a little drawing on here just as an example. Um, if we have a rotating shaft um, and it's got a bearing support between the shaft and something that's fixed. And um, you know, in this case, we might be talking about uh, a thrust bearing, which can take on um, both axial loads uh, as well as radial loads uh, on, on that part. So when we talk about this rotation, um, generally we have uh, some sort of lubrication surface between these points of contact. So where there's a rotating object and the non-rotating object um, and the amount of lubrication and, and uh, friction that we see is kind of dependent on everything, a, a bunch of other factors and whether we're achieving hydrodynamic lubrication or, or not. So giving kind of an exaggerated view of this, if we had a shaft, so this is my smaller in, inner circle is the shaft and the outer circle is the, the hole that the shaft rides in. Um, under no rotation or when it's at rest, we might expect it to look something like this, right? The shaft is gonna be sitting uh, on the bottom surface of that hole uh, and you know, not, not achieving any form of lubrication, it's just resting there, right? Under slow rotation, again, our, our outer surface and um, suppose we have this again, the shaft. This is going to be harder to draw accurately. It's rotating around its center. And it's kind of starting to, let's say, climb that, that inner wall um, of the hole that it rides in. And it's starting to achieve some separation. Um, it's pulling oil through rotation down into that interface between the two things uh, until eventually we get faster rotation, in which case we have a film of oil in between those two. So in between the shaft and the, and the hole, um, we have oil, right? And that of course, you know, means that there's much less friction happening. Uh, and it requires that the shaft is rotating fast enough that it's pulling oil with it down into that interface um, and causing it to lift. So really what, what's happening is as it's rotating, we have surface tension, um, and it's, it's pulling the oil with it, building up pressure until that pressure is enough to actually cause the shaft to float on top of the oil. So once it's uh, got high enough pressure built up, then it can lift the shaft um, and support it on that, that now pressurized oil um, and oppose whatever, you know, whatever downward loads in this case might be, uh, might be on the shaft. Uh, so, you know, there's a few things affecting this and whether or not we achieve this, you know, hydrodynamic lubrication where we have oil between the rotating shaft and the hole. Um, and there's kind of several things that we would want to consider. Uh, the viscosity of the oil, uh, the rotational speed, and then how much load uh, is being placed on, uh, on that, that shaft. So, you know, of course, as you might expect, um, if there's higher viscosity, 
then we don't need uh, as high of a rotational speed in order to pull the oil because there's going to be greater friction. But of course, greater friction could also be problematic as well, right? If we have higher friction than we really need, then that's inefficiency. We're, we're losing um, power transmission through that. If we have a higher rotational speed, of course, that means we're going to achieve, um, achieve float easier, right? It lowers our viscosity requirements, so the higher uh, we expect the shaft to rotate, the less, uh, the lower the viscosity of our oil uh, is necessary. And, um, but of course, it also, higher rotation also means greater friction, right? So we kind of have a balance there between oil viscosity and rotational velocity. Uh, and then of course, the load that's actually applied, so um, um, in this case, I'm primarily talking about radial loads, the higher the load, the faster rotation or the higher viscosity oil we need in order to achieve this, this floating condition. And so we can specify all those things, right? If we know our rotational speed of our shaft, we can use that along with the expected loads in order to design through specification um, of our oil, right? Our oil viscosity. So, you know, we could say um, an SAE 40 oil versus an SAE 30 oil where you know that that specification is basically how viscous the oil is at measured at 212 um, degrees fahrenheit uh, similarly an, an sae 10w versus an sae 5w um, which is measured at zero degrees fahrenheit um, and we can specify those things depending on on what it is we're trying to do so that's the general principle uh, of what we're talking about with lubricated bearings um, and then I'll be getting into uh, how we actually analyze uh, these bearings in a later video. All right, thanks.